welcome back. You guys probably could have guessed I had to get on for a win like that. I'll just spend a good maybe 10 minutes just sharing thoughts that I'm sure many of you uh, have had since the game transpired. Uh, first off, big picture, just just a huge win for the program. I, I know LSU is not a great team. They're kind of in rebuild mode, Brian Kelly's first year, etc. But they're still littered with talent. I think according to recruiting rankings, they have uh, still a t the top 10, uh, one of the most talented teams. Um, and Brian Kelly is a good coach. And we've seen it in the past, anytime we've played any team with any kind of pulse, especially two years ago, you know, we get slaughtered. So to go to the Superdome, essentially what we thought would be a home game for LSU and to win is you can't say enough. It's good, great for the coaching staff, great for the players. It might help with a couple key recruits that were at the game. You know, winning tends to help with recruiting just a little bit. Um, just a little bit. I mean, let's not get into staff changes, regardless of how many wins they get this year. But just, it just feels good. 2-0 for the first time since, what, 2016? Got a bye week to just kind of soak it all up and enjoy it. And then you go and play Louisville, who look like complete ass cheeks versus Syracuse. I'm not going to assume any W's. feel like this program's not in that place yet, but you got to feel pretty good. So um, talk about the game itself. Maybe just break it into some, like, segments. I think first you got to start with Travis, man. This guy is not obviously not the guy he was last year, not, and definitely not the guy he was two years ago. The way he's developed as a passer is so impressive, and you have to give the staff a ton of credit, whether it's um, a combination of Norvell and Dilly or Norvell, Dilly, and Tokars. Um, maybe you can throw Atkins' name in there. Whoever has helped develop Travis, he is now, without question, a good college quarterback. I'm not going to sit here and say some NFL draft pick or All-American or even All-ACC. But to go out versus what is a talented LSU defense, and yes, I know, they lost Mason Smith and that hurt them, but they still got talent on that side of the ball. And to just stay strong in the pocket, make pinpoint throws, just manage the game was huge. He just looked completely in control. You know, when he had to scramble, he kept his eyes downfield. I mean, he didn't run a ton. He had maybe one long run, but a lot of it was just, you know, keeping the play alive to throw it downfield. Of course, it helps to have more competent receivers. Um, but you got to start there. Great game for him. You got to feel good for him. And then I guess you move uh, to the next segment of the offense, like the offensive line. And when it was ruled that the starting right tackle, Bless Harris, was out, I was like, we're fucked. We're, we are so fucked. Because Turrentine is a transfer from South Carolina, and didn't really grit out well last year at South Carolina. And you, you heard some decent things about him this year in fall camp, like he had lost some weight. But still, you read that he probably was better at guard. So to hear that he had to play right tackle versus a good LSU defensive line, I was like, oh, we're fucked. We're, but for the most part, I thought the line played pretty decently, like maybe above average. And that is a hell of a statement to make considering the O-lines we've seen these last few years. That LSU defense isn't dog shit. I mean, we'll see what they turn into the rest of the season. But that D-line, even without Smith, still has a decent amount of talent on it. And I thought for the most part they held up. Um, you know, they had to grind out the rushing yardage, uh, which was like three and a half yards of carry, which isn't great. But they still didn't abandon the run. And they, they managed 133 total yards uh, rushing. So I got to give a little tip of the cap. They played better than I thought they would. Um, go to the receivers. Pokey Wilson reminds everyone that he's still at FSU for like his 10th year. Um, I don't know who he was matched up against, as in CB1, CB2, or CB3 for LSU. So maybe someone in the um, comments could um, tell me. Regardless, you know, huge tip of the cap to Pokey. Two touchdowns, over 100 yards. But the reason I bring up who he's matched up against is, you know, the transfers... They didn't have as big as game, but you, you would think, you'd assume that their presence helps a guy like Pokey, because Pokey's likely going to get shut down by CB1s. So if he's going up against a CB2 or CB3, that's a better matchup, obviously. Um, but again, tip of the cap for him to actually coming through and making all those plays. Micah Pittman had a couple big third down grabs. Wilson was kind of up and down, but 
had a couple big grabs as well. McDonald was back and showed that he can at least get you some big catches, not the greatest blocker in the world. Um, just, it's nice to actually have viable options to throw to now. They're, none of them are like spectacular, but compared to last year's receiving core, you, you have some options. So that's exciting. Um, you know, I mentioned the running game. Obviously, the running backs didn't have huge games. I thought Ward was not just because of his stats, but he played the best because he was really just trying to get what he could. It, it seemed like the other two were, you know, kind of going east and west a little too much, dancing too much instead of hitting the hole. Um, but I'm glad, again, they didn't abandon the run. Like, you knew Jordan was going to have to pass probably 30-plus times, and he did. And that's something you normally don't want this team to do because this team you would assume would be more of a running team but um they still ran it 38 times and I think that's important you got to keep the team honest and again it wasn't great rushing output but it was enough like a lot of those how many second downs or second longs because of a three or four five yard run gave them a third manageable those were huge second down runs that helped you know keep you not ahead of the sticks necessarily but give you a chance um, at the stick, so to speak. And the play calling on offense, can't go without saying that, whether it's Norvell, Norvell, and Atkins, some combination, it, it was a great called game. Yes, there were moments that we could nitpick and be like, I don't know if I would have called that, or maybe that decision was suspect. But on the whole, I thought it was a a great uh, game called by um, Norvell and company. Um, it's really hard to, to bitch when you look back and see how they... You know, they didn't abandon the run. They moved the pocket some. A couple trick plays mixed in. Um, you know, huge on third down all night. Just money on third down. Um, wow, it's hard to complain too much against an LSU defense, which you think would at least be a pretty solid um, by year's end, I would guess. And moving over to defense, other than the fourth quarter and a couple penalties and the 99-yard drive where I didn't like them playing three-man front, almost exclusively that last drive. I mean, for the most part, the defense looked well-coordinated. And I got to, you know, I don't see the all-22s. None of us do. But it just seemed for the overwhelming majority of the game, people were in position to make plays. It seemed like a coordinated D. There wasn't a ton of, like, wow, that, what's what the fuck's going on here moments. There really wasn't a ton of that. You know, there are O-lines inexperienced, and that showed our DL um, really pushed them around at different points in the game. And that's big reason why they had Daniel start because they knew he, they'd have to have a guy that would escape because they were getting their shit pushed in a few times. And Jared Verse, of course, got to mention him, two sacks. Yeah, he may not be Jermaine Johnson, but so far two games in, it's clearly a hell of a get from the transfer portal. It's nice to have linebackers um, that are actually good, like Deloche and um, Bethune. I thought played well for the most part, flying all over the field. Uh, Deloach shadowed Daniels a couple times, tracked him down a couple times. Um, the corners, it's hard to say how well they played because Daniels isn't a good thrower, so they weren't challenged a ton. Um, I thought Dent played well. Robinson played well for the most part, except for the, those two penalties that they, they each had one of them. But other than, you know, the last five minutes of the game, the defense was doing work and they looked like they had it together. Um, so really hard to complain about that. Um, special teams, I mean, beyond Fitzgerald not being able to kick, special teams obviously came through big, blocked field goal by verse, blocked, field, blocked PAT to win the fucking game. Um, punt coverage was good. Kickoff coverage was good. Kickoff return and punt returns weren't that, weren't great. But I wouldn't say they were bad. They were just kind of, you know, par. If you want to use that golf term, just kind of, eh, they didn't fuck up. Um, just a great win. Feels great to be 2-0. It just can't get over it. How that, how that ended and you just knew, like, here we go. You know, I'm sure you had that, here we fucking go. We're going to find a way to blow this. Um, you know, we're about to punch it in to go up 14 with a minute and a half and we fumble and uh yeah I didn't, obviously hindsight's one thing but it there's no reason to add it no reason to add unnecessary risk just hand it off qb sneak there's no reason for a pitch that close um 
what other calls? The other big call was going for it on fourth and two before the half. I didn't mind going for it, but I can I can definitely understand the argument that why are you going to throw a fade to 5'11 Pittman when you have 6'7 Wilson, you have 6'4 McLean, you have 6'4 Span, uh, a couple other tall receivers like that the personnel didn't make sense. That said, Travis did throw a good ball and it was catchable. Um, so those are a couple big plays that you could definitely criticize, but on the whole, I thought the coaching staff that called a good game on, on both sides of the ball. Some things I obviously have to clean up. Thank goodness the bye week's here because there's definitely um, some walking wounded. Read that Fabo, I love it, kind of banged up his knee. So uh, hopefully he's all right. Maybe we'll hear about Bless Harris's shoulder that kept him out of this game. Maybe he'll be back by Louisville, but I'm at the 10-minute mark. Just a few thoughts. Uh, just enjoy it. Next week, get to just sit back and relax and think about other fan bases uh, stressing out over uh, their teams. So great win. Don't care that LSU is, is not, you know, a great team. I think they're likely maybe a bold team. But still, the, needed this win. You had to have it, especially considering how well you played for most of the game. So until next time, I'm out.